Hello there. My name is Ramundo Flores, and this is the part two of Civil Engineering Review. Um, today, I bring to you a review of chapters 9 to 11. And again, I know it's been uh, some months, but I think since May of last year, perhaps June of last year, but I'm still ensuring my promise of uh, recording videos related to all 62 chapters so hang in with hang in there and I'll keep doing my best to uh, spend the time to put together these uh, powerpoints and hopefully you can make, see um, you can find them useful so uh, one thing I wanted to say is I got a job at working at uh, Universal Structural Engineers in San Mateo so I am very happy about that. It is a structural engineering company and I'm entry level. I'm learning a hell of a lot there and I am enjoying myself. Uh, we get to work on big pro... Eh, I want to say right now I'm not really working on big projects, but in general we work on big projects. Um, uh, it's not just one small nook, um, small type of project like stairs. There's a variety of projects that we work on um, because the main guy, you know, the president of the company knows a lot of people and they like, and we have good connections otherwise. So without further ado, I want to explain that um, my purpose in making these videos and part of that has to do with the fact that I still want to fulfill my promise of getting it out there. But also I'm trying to become more involved in this structural engineering community so that if I go out there um, they'll say, oh, hey, so what are you all about? Well, I uh, help people and things like that. You know, I try my best to act as a tutor for people so that because I invested a lot in my education and I really want to show that um, it wasn't just wasted just to get a job. So I'm for real, you know, of course I'm for real. So um, I want to make sure that it's obvious that this is what I'm interested in and that um, I'm always involved in something structural engineering related. Whether that's a very small like Anchorage project or even something working for an aerospace company possibly one of these days. Um, but whatever the case is, that's what I want to do and I want to make it known to the world that that's what I want to do. So, um, And also, uh, I, I'm, I'm always looking into the future trying to see new applications of things and that's why, um, that's why I really want to be involved because that's another, that's another reason is uh, we could probably have it could probably be used it's always going to be useful structural engineering and as we progress it's, it'll probably be it'll be increasingly more interesting the type of projects we're going to look at uh, although I do want to work on buildings and bridges for a very considerable amount of time you could see we could see any type of structure that can be used for uh, space travel possibly or some other thing that's going to be useful for the future um, possibly ex you, you might have structures that will be walkways um, air, aero walkways you could have structures that are hanging roofs um, that span thousands of feet um, now I'm not trying to be an arc like a you know long-winded architect but these things are not impossible it's it's probably around the corner so it's always going to be useful and I want to make sure to let everyone know that I'm serious uh, about this. So anyway, let's move on. <clears throat> so let's start off with uh, Civil Engineering Part 2. Civil Engineering FE Part 2 a review. Um, an overview of it so uh, without going too much into it this this is going to include first of all hydrology so in terms of our scope hydrology will include um, storage uh, versus transport applications and so what we're really talking about is water storage um, or transport. So in the water storage case, you might have things like culverts, which, which is basically like a, a long pipe 
that carries that transports that can transport or it could store water too but in our purposes let's just keep it at transporting and so in that case it'd be transporting right so let me go ahead and um, draw that over here you'll have transport and storage um, so this is a culvert um, then there's water here so uh, you might be transporting it and it could have a velocity going this way and that might be you know you might have to consider some aspects of that but um, basically this is like culverts pipes etc uh, etc and this is this is more specifically uh, going to relate to something called not peak, not runoff but peak runoff and you'll see that later what why that's important so that's inches cubed per second or something like that you know it could be could be feet cubed per second uh, but then in this case you would be concerned with something called um, total runoff so this is going to be like a, a dam you could have some kind of container like a dam or something and um, so this would be concerning total runoff right so in this case the, that would be basically what was the scope of hydrology so let's move on and you'll see more details about this later so now in hydraulics uh, which I probably should have put down a little bit lower uh, but let me get rid of this um, let me change this up a bit you can say let me see so let me just put dams and then this is total runoff so in this case hydraulics um, so for hydraulics we're mostly concerned about the mechanics of of water transport I want to call them um, contraptions for you know for a lack of a better term because you might have something like a pipe that can you know go up here with an arbitrary you know area and we don't know what that area is uh, right now but it, it can be skinny here it could be big here and then you might have something else where the and you want to make sure that this is has it meets a specification so you want to say the uh, meets um, specific that the design meets specification according to to mechanics so according to mechanics and so that's what you're doing like you so it, it can get quite complicated because it, this could be anything from a um, you talk about hydraulics from a man-made a man-made um, sewer sewer system or something to to uh, um, like an estuary so it could be man-made it cannot be man -made, you know but you're essentially trying to work out the mechanics of some kind of contraption or it could just be some um, some natural uh, some natural thing that's allowing flow to happen so it's just the way it is so it could also be liquid of any kind but for our purposes it'll, it's going to be water so let's move on and so now with groundwater we're going to be concerned with anything that w in which water um, flows through uh, soil so anything having to do with water flowing through soil is what we're going to be concerned about with groundwater so in that case, we need to use something called Darcy's 
we're going to be studying Darcy's Law. And that's a, that's basically, you could just say it's a special differential equation. And two is, another, another thing we're going to study is, is, um, I want to say, Draw down um, wells. Now, this really, this is this is going to require calculus, but it uses, but it's one of the same in terms of Darcy's law. So, this Darcy's law is going to be is can be used to derive number two, um, but. Essentially, Darcy's law explains um, a general general flow through soils because it has to penetrate through. So, um, without further ado, let's move on, uh, and that's what we're going to be looking at. So, the caveat again is, like I said in my previous video, is that we are referencing the following books. So. The 9.4 version, you're going to want to have that next to you so you can uh, see where everything's at and then mark it up if you need to put a postage um, post -it note in, in it or whatever you can do. Maybe tab the CB, the handbook if you wanted to. Uh, and then we're also going to be using the review manual from Lindbergh and also the practice problems. So you might want to have those too. So these are the books that I'm going to be, I'm going to be using throughout the presentation and you can go ahead and use them as well. As I as you watch this, it only, it only it's only going to help. So now let's move on to let's start with hydrology. So with hydrology, as I said earlier, we're going to be concerned with two aspects, right? We're going to have the storage, storage, um, the water storage versus the water transport, and it's it's distinguished based on the type of Q you have. So in this case, Q for storage is going to be um, inches cubed, and it's, or it could also be, which I didn't say earlier, probably should have, or it could also be inches. I'll get to that later. Q in the transport case can be inches, inches cubed per, per is going to be inches cubed per second, because this is going to be this is going to be um, concerning. The total flow, um, the flow per second um, that goes along as it, um, as the water gets transported, but storage is you know and you don't really care about the flow right per per second. If you're talking about the flow per second, you might as well just get how much uh, inch you're gonna have, right? You're, you how, whether it's gonna flood or not. For, but for transport, and you're talking about flood, when you're talking about uh, flow, you can be concerned very strongly with how it's going to the the system you're using is going to sustain like if it's going to be too if it's going to uh push too hard on the side of the of the pipe or the culvert as it goes through and thus it might ha it might create damage um and it may not just be water it could be some other thing you might it, it, it could create abrasion damage or it can create you know some kind of erosion of damage uh so in that case you'll be want to study this might have to do with the erosion concerns um but in this case you don't really have that because it just collects so th in this case because you because in storage it just collects and you have water and water going in you're mostly concerning about um about flooding so this is flooding and in the storage case with flooding it's um it just can can be undesirable because water can go in places you don't want it and it can be wasted um you don't you want to avoid flooding so that's why storage is important. So the specification in this case has to do with specification. Um, in this case has to do with um, flooding control, and in this case has to do with um, possibly erosion control. 
and maybe pressure control control say to avoid uh, pipe damage and you might also there's so many other things too it could you could also have to do with uh, um, satisfying satisfying uh, see salination requirements so basically making sure that the water is has a certain uh, chem chemistry to it to where it's drinkable it's pot potable things like that so the that can be important because if it if it's transported at a certain velocity you might be able to uh, filter it a certain way I don't know something like that so uh, the velocity could have to do with that so or the flow has, could have to do with that but basically this is where we're looking at and in this case this is specifically related to um, storage so when you when you look at storage um, you know, like well, we're talking about things like uh, flooding control and so in this case um, this is a simple method in which you can use uh, for to, to to approximate what the total, um, and it might even be conservative, the total uh, runoff will be in a particular um, watershed. So uh, estimates, you could say estimates um, runoff or precipitation excess as is said in the book, right? But, you know, I'm just using it. Um, it's, it estimates the runoff. How do I put it? To control flooding, you know, things like that. Um, to control f flooding. And, uh, yeah, so that is the case, but it's basically what you're doing. If we're talking about the equation itself, we're starting with his, this, this one, and then we jump to there, to here, and then we jump here, and then this is the end. So, anyway, so that's what that's about. And if, um, if you use this, you know, if you end up using this equation in real life, you might be able to say, okay, well, let me calculate that, and that's going to be complicated, but then I'm going to, if this thing, which we know is some, it's going to be in inches, or um, inches cubed, right? Or maybe feet cubed, it could de depends. If that is less than a specific, the, what you see in some kind of book that says, okay, we please avoid going this far, because we want to control flooding. You say something about, something like Q in a uh, book, or like, it could be some AS, ASCE thing, right? Then, then we're good in that case. But there's this is not an FE, so don't worry about it. But this is the ultimate bigger pick, biggest picture when it comes to this stuff. So you want to avoid flooding, and this can help you to to rationalize it. So uh, to rationalize it, you're okay. So anyway, so then that's what that's all about. Let's move on to the next thing. So again, see how this is CFS. This is cubic feet per second. So because of that, this is yet again a, a simple formula, a rational way in which it applies for water transport. Um, and you'll see that that's important. So this is called the... Um, this is also known as... Um, the peak runoff and if I'm going to be more specific here I'm going to start with a graph this is a hydro uh, you could look it up but hydro hydro hyd, it's a hydrograph or something like that so if we have a curve that looks like this in which this is the units for it, so it's inches cubed per second. 
and this is seconds, right? Then we could look something, we can get something like that. And in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to notice that this value here is, is the peak, which we call the peak runoff. Okay, and um, and um, the area the area is what we call the peak. I'm sorry, the the total runoff, right? So if you have the area that's a total runoff in the, in the this thing that's a the peak runoff, then that's trying to well that's just trying to show you that what what we have earlier has to do with the area, whereas this has to do with the peak runoff. So um, again, you can get flooding, but when when we're using pipes and culverts, we assume that there's no buildup of, for the most part, that there's no buildup of. Uh, um, I want to say of. Of water so that the height remains constant so when you're using this formula it assumes that so you know when you're saying okay I have a pipe or something right we're saying that at some time this thing is is leveled a certain way right this is the level and that at t equals one second that remains the same that's what we're saying here so um, if this is you know water so we could say um, at t equals say 20 seconds that the height height remains the same. That's what it, that's what the peak runoff um, that's when it, the peak runoff applies in this case when you're using the rational formula. And you can see that that they talk about that in the in the book. But basically, if you were able to get this this plot which would only apply to storage um, is this is this even though it only applies to storage I am using it as a to, to um, as a tool to show you what total runoff is versus peak runoff but in in reality when we apply this formula we're gonna get something that looks more like um, more like uh, this when we're using this formula so work this is q so this this is uh with with the rational formula and in this case it would be for something like a dam or something like that so um just keep that in mind now oops something weird happened anyway um Yes, yeah, so you can verify that on some page in the review book. Any, anyway, so let's move on. Um, oh, one more thing is that I wanted to explain what the formula is because to a certain extent it might be a little bit confusing. So let me get rid of all this stuff. Um, let me explain something about the formula. Um, so when you use this formula, you have to understand what this is. This is not really explained. Like it's explained in a small paragraph or small uh, sentence in um, the Lindbergh, but for the most part, there's a hidden formula, and always use it. C when you use it in here is equal to the sum of C i a i divided by the sum of a i. So C, as used in Q equals CIA equation, is a weighted sum of CI. 
So, because a lot of times you're going to be given what CI is, what AI is, but it won't be, you know, obviously they're not going to be that obvious. They're going to say, okay, well, this area has that, this area has that, and they're going to be very general and try to, to lead you in a different direction. But in that case, you just use the information. So we'll see that later, hopefully soon, maybe the next slide, I don't remember exactly, but we'll see that later. So let's move on. So let's go over an example of what I just said. So it says, a watershed occupies a 70-acre um, site. 45 acres of the site have been cleared and are used for pasture land with a runoff coefficient of 0 0.13. Um, um, Okay. Three acres are occupied by farm buildings, a house, and paved surfaces, and have a runoff coefficient of 0 0.75. The remaining 22 acres are woodland with a runoff coefficient of tw uh, 0.20. The total time to concentration for the watershed is 30 minutes. The 20 year storm is characterized by the intensity duration curve shown. So, I forgot to show this portion. The peak runoff for the 20 year storm is most nearly what? Okay, well, this is an easy problem actually, um, if you understand what I just said. So, you see how they're giving you a bunch of um, CIs and AIs. Uh, the AI is just this portion and this portion. So, what we have is, and I, I mean, we can just make this easy, right? We can say, well, the the watershed itself I, I mean you don't even need a table but I'm just doing it watershed itself oops you also have the coefficient for it and then you have the area for the watershed so if we kinda just do a freaking tape you know I mean a table right um, oops I hate to make it look net bad but right you start with a table and so you say the watershed one right We'll just call it one. Has 70, has, um, not 70, but the first one, they say the total area for the watershed itself, um, for the watershed itself. So, God. So, we could just say, um, you could just call it a portion. plot of land one so for plot of land one we have as you can see it's the pasture land right it is 0 0.13 and then it has an area of 45 AC right um, acres plot, plot of land number two has a coefficient of and by the way this is bad but has a coefficient um, wait so this plot of land um, if you visualize it is all like like a rectangle but it's being used for buildings houses um, a house and paved surfaces so it's still one plot of land so we're saying three acres in this case um, it has a coefficient 0.75. Um, the remaining 22 acres are woodland with a run runoff coefficient of 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 is here, and this is plot of land three, and this is 22. As you could tell, right? That's just the obvious thing, right? So because of this, um, we could just keep that there, keep that there. So, we have this table here, right? Well, this is easy because now we just say, okay, 
Well, they want to know what the peak runoff is, right? So we could we could start off with what we just obtained, um, what we just got, right? Q equals C I A. And let's go back, so you can verify that. That <clears throat> so as you can see from the previous page. Um, you remember what C, you know, the whole point is that C is a, a weighted sum of CI and AI, right? Or just CI, I just call it, I just say a CI. So anyway, because that's the case, you might as well just write out the formula, you know? And, you know, include this. And by the way, this is these are the same, so right, you can cancel them out. Um, so at the end of the day, what you're really up, uh, up to is getting this, so the sum of CI and uh, times AI uh, times I, right? So when you get that, uh, you can clearly see that um, if you take a sum of these, or should say a multiplication, CI, AI, that's just, and then if you put a sum here, we're just not going to apply it here, obviously, because it doesn't matter, but this is... Crack out your calculator, whatever you want to do. Um, this is 5.85, um, 2.25, and 4.4. So you get these, add them together, you can add it, um, 12.5, right? So at the end of the day, that's we have one variable that we need. We call it one variable if you want, but I don't know. So and then you have the intensity, right? So it says here a 20 year storm. Well, the 20 year doesn't really matter because this this is in minutes. And if they said 20 year and then 20, you know that wouldn't make any sense, but uh, to confuse you. But anyway, notice how it says here. Um, where is it? 30 minutes. Watershed is 30 minutes, right? Concentration for the watershed is 30 minutes. So we're gonna go here. This is about 30. So we go up to here. Oh look, uh, that's about eight. So we put in here, and that's about uh, eight inches per hour. And by the way, there's this. You have to be very uh, careful because the units on on this formula, which I didn't go over, I should have. Um, C is to use this formula right. Is in inches per hour. Uh, I'm sorry. Damn it. Uh, that's just no units. The I is in is going to be in inches per hour, and the durate um, the area is in is supposed to be in um, uh, acres. So this is specifically how you use the formula. You have to these have to be in there. So when you get this, you get twelve point five, right? Going to be equal to about 100 so that's if oh and by the way I didn't give you the I didn't even give you the problem sorry about that I'm just so anyway the problem is that you want to find out what Q is sorry um, if I confuse you so this is about B so B is the correct answer that's it so anyway I should have given you the problem I don't know why I didn't but that's basically what it is let's move on Um, so now let's go to another problem which is similar so it says if the total precipitation is 11 inches, what will be the approximate runoff from the watershed? So this goes back to what we saw in the beginning. This equation, these these set of equations. You have CN equals this, S equals this, Q equals this, right? So we're gonna have to use all three to eventually produce what we really want. Um, it should that should be the case? So it said, what is if the total precipitation is 11 inches, what will be the pro approximate runoff? So if, we, if you go back, you know, you notice that Q was going to be equal to, um,
it was equal is equal to p minus 0 0.2 s squared over p plus 0 0.8 s right so but but in order to get here we have to start with and then the s equals 1000 over cn minus 10 so like in order to, like i said we have to start with c the curve number right so the curve number is 1000 over s plus 10 so S is not the precipitation, obviously, but S is going to be the uh, basin retention, right? So um, maybe we're given the curve number, right? Well, let's see, we're given the curve number. Um, yeah, so these are all the curve numbers, right? So let's ask the question, are they talking about a specific, a specific a plot of land or are they talking about the whole area? So, okay, so they're talking about the whole watershed. So in this case, what I would do is do exactly what you did for the other one, which is take a residual sum. So in this case, we're going to get a residual sum. So we don't um, we don't need this. So we just say it's given, and it's given in such a way that actually um, turns out that and let's just get rid of this. C n in this case is uh, weighted residual of all of them so you might have like you know cn i used as used in the equation times um ai it's it's the same kind of thing it's a residual sum of the with respect to area oops so i'm not going to make a table because it's already here so you can just kind of sum it together of type b soil and it's uh, residential, so we could go ahead and do that. Say, okay, it's got to be this one. And that's uh, 10 acres. And then type B and f uh, 5 acres of, of grassland of type A. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the case. So in this case, we're going to be saying, okay, 10 AC times um, 72 plus... 5ac times 30. Divide that by the area, so that's just 10 plus 15, or 5ac. So, what do we get? Um, Fifteen. So that's 58. So we plug that into the formula. This shouldn't be the case. 58. Um, I'm going to set 10, that's 7.24. Plug that in here. Remember, we go from here to here. So this is the final result. So this should be P, P is given as, is the precipitation, which is 11 inches. Well, that's 11 minus 0 0.2 times uh, S, which we said is, um, I mean, I know what S is. Uh, we, oh yeah, we already calculated, obviously. 7.24, square that, divide that by 11 plus 0 0.8 times 7.24, and then that's gonna be equal to what? Um, so, five point four three inches that's the answer and that's a so the answer is a hopefully it made sense uh, you should make a mistake on the exam if you see a problem like this that little thing that I did it was just a small screw up I mean you could always overcome that if you have good sleep and you're clear your head is clear and stuff like that so I don't know what happened but anyway let's move on